Well, now to interact with wild dolphins. We're at Bunbury, two and a half hours drive south of Perth, where 192 dolphins, some of them transient, most of them resident, have been identified here in the past 18 months. There are few spectacles as alluring as the sun setting over the water. In Western Australia, that's exactly what happens every day because the coast faces west. We're on the Indian Ocean where birds and fishermen alike gather on waters abundant with fish. It's this same abundance of fish life that has attracted a large number of dolphins. Here at Bunbury on Kumbana Bay, there's so many dolphins that a research centre has been set up the Dolphin Discovery Centre. So the fish attract the dolphins, which in turn attract visitors, hundreds of them <laughs> wading into the water every morning to watch one of the wonders of the wild world, the appearance of wild dolphins. They're not tame. You certainly are not allowed to touch them, but they are inquisitive, swimming right in front of the crowd. The marine biologist in charge of the Dolphin Discovery Centre is Phil Coulthard. So let's talk about what we've got right here in Bunbury. We've got a transient population and we've got a resident population. Exactly. We've got a population that live here, around about 30 of them. Levy's one of our most popular local residents. Uh, as I said, she's about 14 years old. So uh, she's quite a new dolphin. They live to about 50. So uh, she certainly uh, isn't a strange, but she is a young, young female. Um, but so we've got around about 180 to 200 dolphins that we know have been sighted and have been logged through their dorsal fins. We've got names for 200 animals. How many other dolphins will you get here on the best of days? Well, yesterday we had eight dolphins come in. Uh, the day before that we had six. Uh, we have a, a list of about 10 dolphins on the provisioning program. Um, and we average around about five to six visits per month from each of those animals. Look at that, look at that. Look at that. You can see as she's swaying her head backwards and forwards. She's actually looking at you with a sonar as well as her eyes. So uh, she's very, very aware. Uh, and that's the, the level of uh, brilliance um, that these animals have to find something as big as a 10 cent piece from 80 metres away. That's how incredibly accurate the sonar is. Capturing these wild dolphins as they cavort in the waters off Bunbury is a photographer's dream. Fiona Harvey has recorded a superb range of dolphin behaviours. Oh, I've been really lucky. I've managed to get, I think, all the behaviours that you can imagine, the socialising, the fishing, the surfing and the leaping out of the water, all the behaviours that the dolphins perform out in Kumbana Bay here in Bunbury. So to catch that sort of behaviour, you're going to be very quick with your oh, uh, you're trigger finger. Oh, you extremely quick and extremely patient. I'm behind the camera the entire time. Sometimes I'll be out on a boat for two to three hours and I'll be behind the camera. I try and watch their behaviour and try and anticipate what they're going to do. Obviously not always um, get it right, but I, I try and watch what's going to happen so that then hopefully I'll get that special photo. You must have an affinity for the dolphins to take so many photographs. Oh, I do, yes. You get to know their, their behaviour, their names. They all have markings on their fins. Um, so from that we identify the dolphins. Um, yes, it's, it, it is a real privilege to be here and they, they are very special and we are extremely lucky to have such a large number of dolphins here in Bunbury. Next experience at Bunbury is to boat out to yet more dolphins. Just north of the Dolphin Discovery Centre, there's a bay where we're guaranteed to see more of them. And sure enough, they begin to swim around the bow. We're seeing a lot of activity. First off, the dolphin's actually running with the boat. That's quite, uh, quite a sight. Yeah, yeah bow riding is awesome. It's quite exciting to see the dolphins actually riding the front of the boat. It's because it's creating a wave. So uh, they do that with their, with their mums when they're first born. That's where dolphins learn the behaviour in the first place. Interesting scarring we're seeing. This one's got a huge cut across its back. Yeah, very obvious scar. It's about an inch wide as well. It's actually from a boat propeller. And that's one of the concerns, obviously, we have with dolphins in this area. Dealing with uh, sharks, a lot of the uh, markings on the dolphins are also from shark bites. We saw two or three today with big markings. And, of course, from uh, boats as well. Big issues, but uh, they recover very, very well from it. 
interesting part of the coastline we're following now, these huge sand dunes, and the dolphins are coming right up to the shore here. Yeah, oh, they love the, to use the shoreline as a bit of a natural netting, because they follow the fish. Fish are easy to catch in shallow water. That's where the shallow water is. There's a bit of a drop off there as well. So it acts like a net and, and much easier to catch fish. And also the birds are there as well. We're watching some of those dolphins surging along as they chase the fish on the shoreline. Yeah, yeah well, they, they do need to aquaplane quite often because the, the depth of the water is too shallow for the size of the dolphins. So as they push forwards, they're actually being lifted a little, creating a bit more water underneath them as well. And also just that splashing activity is keeping the fish against the beach anyway. But also the fish are moving quickly, so the dolphins have to catch them. Phil, this has been a sensational day. The dolphins in the water just right now. Yeah, yeah. And we can go swimming as well. Let's go. I think we should give it a crack. OK, good on you. Let's go. Swimming with wild dolphins. How special is this? Phil and I join the other passengers for a thrilling climax to a day with the dolphins of Bunbury. Just south of Bunbury at Busselton, there's a very special jetty, the longest in the southern hemisphere, jutting out almost two kilometres into the Indian Ocean. Quite some jetty out here. It is. It's 1.84 kilometres long at the far end. Uh, at the moment, it's accessible to 1.7 metres, which is where the underwater observatory is. It was built for export of the timber and dairy products and Potatoes were an early crop in the area as well. This section was severed by a fire in 1999 and um, it's no longer possible to reconstruct this area, but the underwater observatory fitted into the place where the fire was, so it's worked out really well. The underwater observatory is a structure that goes down about 12 metres and actually sits on the seabed. People are looking out to the natural marine environment, beautiful corals and sponges that grow on the jetty piles. This is the most southerly point where coral grows on a western coast anywhere in the world. So we're really lucky to be able to give people the opportunity to observe what happens. The community has been behind the preservation of the jetty since 1972 when the state ceased using it as a working port. And without the community, the jetty wouldn't be standing the way it is today. Next time we travel Oz, exploring Australia's Antarctic Territory. Orcas hunting penguins. Leaping a dailies. Christmas Day in the fast ice. Also, cycling Victoria. The two teams join the state's biggest bike ride. And Western Australia's Margaret River, prime wine territory and a surfer's ride inside the barrels. Well, from Mawson's Hut, Antarctica, that is this episode of Travel Oz. I'm Greg Granger, a very cold one. Happy travels.